cracking. Welcome to the woods. We got my boy here, KD. I would like to call him the King Mural. Mural of King, King of All Murals. And all these great things he has in the Shreveport, Bossier area and beyond. So this is what this interview is about, to see what he's up to and how he's living. So how you feeling, bro? I'm great, man. I'm blessed and uh, mm-hmm. glad to be here, bro. So thanks for the invite. You know, we, we run it. We go... We go back a little minute, huh? Oh, yeah. College days. Yeah. College days. Tech and everything else. So, man, I was honored for you to ask me to join you on your platform. So, glad to be here, bro. For sure, man. Yeah, we about to get into mix. So, how I would like to start out is, like, go to the beginning, man. So, Katie, tell us, uh, who were you as a kid? Were you, you know what I'm saying, you get in trouble for doodling, or are you a class clown, or kind of <laughs> shy? What, do you, what were you back in the day? Oh, that's interesting. Dang, who was I as a kid? I wouldn't say I was... Like the loudest kid, I was I was real cool. Like I was mm-hmm. always kind of a laid back person. Right. So uh, when it came to school, I just you know I went with the flow. Of course, you know you meet your girls and you have your crushes and you have your best friends and yeah. uh, then you start getting into things that make you kind of different. You know you st- yeah. you're, you're, you don't have those uh, blocks on your mind yet that this right. may be tacky or whack or you didn't you sure. know when you a kid you just doing your thing. Yeah, so. yeah, trying to have fun. You're trying to have fun, yeah. and you're just doing what naturally you're called to do. So, man, sing, oh, man, even before school, I was, like, drawing all over the mm. house. I was drawing uh, dollar bills, and I was drawing, like, stuff off cereal boxes, oh, all okay. that kind of stuff, just the easily accessible things that you could get into as a kid. Yeah. And then uh, Dragon Ball Z is, like, really the Man, that's everybody <laughs> step into the game, man. That's Dragon dope. Ball Z, bro. I used to be running home to trace pictures Dang, on, on the awesome. TV and all this kind of stuff. So it, it just evolved from there. I just got more – I got attracted to, like uh, – I would say more urban references, like my mom o- owned a beauty salon, my mom and dad, and uh, mm-hmm. there they used to have all these magazines. Here in like, Shreveport? Yeah, in I Shreveport. It was called Phases. Mm-hmm. And they had all these magazines in there, and I would take the magazines, like the Source magazine, rap, oh, wow. yeah. rap magazines, and I would draw stuff. Like, we was just talking about graduation. Uh-huh, and yeah. I, that was one of the first, like, Takashi Murakami pictures. That, that's the artist who designed the teddy bear on the graduation. Oh, wow, oh, wow. That was the first reference that I was like, man, I'm really attracted to that. Bruh. And I drew it, like, on my wall in my room. So that's, Dang, that's You still got that picture? I, don't, I never got a picture of it, man. And uh, if my mom listens to this, I, I just want to holler at you. Hey, like, mom, you I know you got the artifacts. Picture. I know she... Yeah, you should have took a picture of that, but we done painted over it and everything <laughs> since then. I got you, I got you. That's dope, man. Well, yeah, so you had the calling on you already, but you were just doing it for fun at the time. For sure. I got Definitely you, I got just you. Definitely just like, ooh, whatever I want to see, let me let me try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did that transition become, like, serious? Oh, I don't know. It's hard. I never considered it serious, you know? Mm. Not even until now, like, I... I hop in and out of it being serious now that I'm an adult because, you know, responsibilities and everything. But yeah, even up through college, I was still, like, tampering with it. I wasn't, mm-hmm. like, ooh, just in my full awareness of who I was and how art, like, could really be a part of who I am as an individual. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, ooh, I got this skill. Let me play around. Yeah, with it yeah, exactly. Yeah. When, I'm, when, I, when I feel like I need to create because artists, mm-hmm. they really get that. Like, yeah. they got to create. Mm-hmm. So... Shoot, man, it's not not until now Still when I'm now, really I thinking about, yeah, and it's always fun. I don't think any artist, any art that doesn't have fun in it, it's not, it's not really, it doesn't connect with people. That's real, that's real. It comes from the heart, for sure. So when I met you, weren't you an architecture major? Yeah, I did architecture. I went to school for architecture, and then I switched over to communication design, which is like oh, graphic wow. design with a marketing focus. You were to do that at Louisiana Tech? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. yeah. yeah. Okay, but, but even at Tech, like my experience, like, uh, mm-hmm. dude, come. T- I went to Tech with all my friends. First off, all my <laughs> friends from Shreveport that yeah. I grew up with, yeah, in high school, we went to Tech together, and that was just like it, it was. It was a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It, it stopped some developmental processes right. that happened in college, but. When I got into, you know, what I was doing, communication design, I started doing party flyers. I started doing graduation invitations, yeah, stuff like that. And slowly but surely, I developed an eye that carried me on into Houston. That's where I went after I graduated. That's right. That's right. All uh, this is coming back to me now. <laughs> I mean, but I feel like it was meant to be. What did hey. you, what'd you, went, what'd you go to school for? I went for, uh, I actually graduated in human resources. Shout out to class of 2014. 
Yeah. But uh, that's what I graduated in. Never got to work in human resources, okay. but that's what I had did. A, um, I was smart to take the aptitude test again when I got to college. And then it was like, you should definitely work with people because it changed from when I, because when I first got there, I was going to do what everybody else wanted me to do. Yeah. And I was like, hold on, I'm about to, you know, put my reins on my own life and figure out what I wanted to do. Okay. I took the aptitude test again and it said I should work with people. And since I was already in the business department, I switched over to human resources. And I was like, one of the best decisions I ever made in college because I actually started liking homework at that point. I was like, all right, I can uh, dig this. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah, Had yeah. you ever felt before that like you should be working with people? It was, like you said, like art, fun. You know what I'm saying? It never yeah. felt like this is your what you should do to get paid for, but more of just like, yo, this is natural. That comes to me. You, you still feel I mean? like that? Now I do what I want to do. You know what I mean? Now it's not basic, basically about what I should do for exactly like what society wants me to do. Right. Now I just do what I'm good at, you know what I mean? Figure out what I'm good at and then trying to get paid for it at least. Okay. Uh-huh. I mean, that's that's where you're going with this podcast. I mean, anything dealing with people, you know. I yeah. think one of the best things about the podcast and, and you being able to have this platform and interact with people is, like, show uh, the individuality is perfect. Like exactly. You need to be able to get people on here that can express who they are so people can feel more confident in yeah. themselves. Yeah, because they're going to relate to your story. I mean, mm-hmm. especially coming – it's not a lot of opportunities out here. I mean, it is, but then again, it's like it's not global and it's not well known what the opportunities are. Sometimes it's a job to connect the opportunities with the people. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's really, I'm I'm glad there's people out there who who have access to the opportunities and have access to the people, and we just merge those together. So I'm hoping with this podcast we can do that. People who who are watching this can see I I see where this person is at, and I know where they need to be at, who they be connected to, and we could just do it like that. You know, expressing each other. Nice. So my next question I want to know, um, do you have any, like, art mentors, somebody you look up to and kind of guide yeah. your way? Yeah, all ages, too. Mm. Like, hey, <laughs> all ages, man. These young kids are just doing some dope things. Really? That, yeah, I'm like, man, that need I can, and being that I'm at the age, I'm 30. Right. So I, can, well. I, see the, I see the landscape a little different, and I see mm. how certain talent can fit in certain places. So. Mm. I have mentors all ages, and they got crazy YouTubes. Or, wow, or yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Or they've been a part of my life and really changed me, not only uh, making me a better artist, mm-hmm. but making me a more full individual, like True. expanding how I see True. the world, which allows you to be a better artist. Uh, so, yeah, man, I have mentors. I don't know if you want me to name them. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I think you, I like what you said because it just shows, again, like, how how different artists because I haven't I have never I'm not gonna say never I didn't have been tapped into visual art yeah I'm done with music and I dealt with uh, movies and television and commercials and stuff like that but visual art as a whole is a different animal you know what I mean and like yeah. I love it when they merge when music and visual art comes together and movies and visual art comes together but I feel like I feel like I don't know what's your opinion but do you believe that or you feel like visual art is like its own separate deal in the art community yeah most definitely it's yeah. crazy that you bring that up because i was just thinking about that last night like uh every year like in january it's mm-hmm. like january it's clockwork i get into this mode where i really focus on the aesthetic of my work and why i'm doing what i'm doing and uh, if it makes sense if i'm in alignment with it mm. so the past couple of weeks i've just been in this space where i'm just really open to all types of art and just paying attention to why different people create different things, you know. Right. It helps me to figure out, you know, some questions that I have for myself. But visual art is so different because I compare it to uh, music all the time. You know, these are things that that God sends through. He sends messages through people. I feel like that's my belief. Right, and yeah. They can either sing it or they could create it visually, you know, mm-hmm. and that attracts. People are attracted to that. Right. And uh, I was just like, man, of course, I feel I feel like music is the, the top like mm. form of art. Yeah. And I, I compare it to visual art and I wonder why it's like that. I and mean, it's easy. I got a few ideas about why it's like that. But you just can't deny like sound is the thing that's at oh, the top yeah. of, of the arts to me anyway. But uh, yeah, visual art is its own thing. You really have to you really it's it's is boundless and mm, is limitless in the yeah. way that people can arrange certain objects and draw parallels from life uh, to the way that they arrange these objects and mm. give you a reason why why it makes sense and why and you're attracted to it after you know that like they just put art together to explain a certain perspective of life to you. 
Wow. And that's how I, that's, that's deep, bro. That's visual. That's art. real deep. And that, that sounds just like how you will make a song. How you put certain things together and you're expressing your, whatever your message or that you got from uh, like a spiritual deity or something from your own self. Right. But that's really cool. So in the, like parallel again with music and art and uh, visual art, there's obviously different genres of music. What a genre of, I guess, I don't know what the quick word, but what genre of art do you like? Yeah. Um, connect with the most there for are yourself. art movements so it's like wow. uh i don't think i heard that one before there are over 50 art 50 60 plus art movements that are like generally known taught in western education mm. and uh right now is like a postmodern contemporary art uh movement that's pretty much what we're in the the, the abstract funky colors are popping around right mm. now a lot of pop uh, figures or a lot of like mainstream elements you'll see in artwork and uh, you'll see wow. a lot of different design elements it's it's reflective of the new technology that we got that they oh. haven't had before now so yeah you'll see a different type more digital looking yeah. artworks and stuff now so that's pretty much that's pretty much what I'm tapped into, mm. but I'm always thinking about ways to connect with people and where they at you yeah. know consciously like some stuff can go over people's head, but hey, they'll catch up to it. <laughs> they catch up to it. Yeah, I know. Uh, we look at like Billboard, who like classifies like different um, levels of art, uh, music as far as like grading it and stuff. Well, what are, what do are avenues do like visual art have that like puts things in categories and stuff like that? It's a lot of like websites, mm -hmm. uh, artsy. They'll mm, they'll I rank that. I think they'll I rank that artists on their uh, shoot. Even like if you look on Google, there are so many lists about artists that are doing different things, you know. And I don't know how they be picking them lists, but anyway, <laughs> then they <laughs> got same thing on Billboard. Next level, Blue Chip. Blue Chip, I guess, would be uh, like Blue Chip would be like what you would compare to Billboard, right? And mm. it's uh, reflective of auctions, art auctions, like at Christie's or. Uh, they got a few other art art auction houses where you see like the pieces mm. sold in the hundreds okay, of millions yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So it's it's different levels to it. Yeah, I don't really know. See, that's what's interesting about art, visual mm. art. There's no like, uh, there is no like in the music industry. There is mm. no like record labels yeah, for yeah, yeah, visual for art, arts and you, stuff yeah. like that. So it's a d whole different system. Yeah, that's that's what I want to tap into because I feel like. I don't even know. Like I, I don't have. I don't even have the brain to like gather in the words right now. But I know it's a different, different, different landscape out there. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. I see. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like relating everything to music, but I, it's <laughs> I, it's what I could really come from when it comes to this art stuff. But yeah, I know there's a lot of cool. teams. Like you were talking about labels. There's a lot of teams when it comes to music. Um, do you have a certain team with you with art? Like somebody who like searches out for stuff or kind of push you in the right motion and moving things? Oh, man, i always kind of been like my own team. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. So you're independent artists, I guess. Yeah, I'm indie. Right on, <laughs> right on. I'm indie yeah. for sure. Like, I always just, because I'm not against the team. I actually am moving to a point where I need more resources. And mm. shoot, that's how I'm opening up. I'm, I'm becoming a more vocal individual because of it. So mm. it's like, it's, it's not a bad time right now. But yeah, man. As far as teams, like uh, you, was, you would say, you would compare a team to like a, a music label, right? Well, that's a part of the team. Yeah, it depends on what the the label uh, contains. Get like manager, yeah. agent, tour okay. agent, and yeah. uh, accountant. You know, it's just somebody. Uh, the, Got it. The circle around the, uh, the artist, I guess you could say. So it would be the same thing for a visual artist. Like mm -hmm. they can have all those same. Play that exactly. whole system around them too, and I I think that's after they hit a certain point in their career. Mm. Right now, like I'm, I've been in Shreveport the past two years, mm -hmm. and I haven't been on that kind of tip. Like I'm not you. doing it to make the hottest album of the year and stuff. I haven't really been. I just been like responding to things like uh, Juneteenth. Let's right. do it. okay. Let's do a mural on the side of this building or yeah. this or, or from Shreveport with love. Like oh, we feel like the city. It needs this. That's yeah. pretty much what I do. I look at the city. I'm like, okay, what does it need? And that's wow. kind of how I approach it. Like Batman. <laughs> like the you ain't Batman. the first oh, person said that either. I may have to <laughs> paint a Batman hey, piece or something. This is Gotham without <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Literally, I said that so many times on Facebook. I was like, Shreveport reminds me of Gotham without Batman. Yeah, I never but, thought about that. Yeah, we need it. Yeah, wow. paint the bat symbol. We'll see what happens. 
right? Let's see and if shoot, he comes. Shoot like these color beams into the air. So <laughs> yeah. See if Tremaine can help me with that. Oh yeah, Tremaine's <laughs> always down. Shout out to Music Masters again. Shout what? out to Music Masters. They shoot all my videos. That'd be dope, man. To start going viral, we got some creative things. Oh man, out. I can't wait, man. Yeah, Dude, yeah, sure. keep me in the in the loop, bro, for sure. Okay, Black History Month. Yeah, oh. today's February first. You want to do a Black History shout out? Yeah, shout out. I mean, look at three black men in the room together collaborating, <laughs> talking about art. I mean, this is what, what would they say our ancestors' dream right here. You know, ancestors' dream that yeah. we can do this freely and express ourselves, and then pay homage back to our ancestors. So. Yeah. Uh, Thank God for them. Thank God for the struggle they went through. And thank God that uh, we made it here today. Yeah, that's dope that you said that. That would be a fire, like, art piece. You know, when I think about people putting art in their house, I kind of, like, think about why would they want it there? Like, mm -hmm. how, how could it actually help the way that they live every day? And right. I got some pieces in my crib that I just look at, and they remind me of the basis of life. Like, right. you know, it's cool to be grateful for, like, what you just said, so... Straight up, man. I, like, I love the way you talk because it's like that is a, the artist, the visual art way of things. Like, how can it serve? And that's really dope, man. Mm. That's really cool. That's Appreciate really cool it. to look at that. Um, So you say you were in Houston before. Yeah. And now you're in Shreveport. All right. Compare the two art lifestyles of Houston and Shreveport. Ooh. And the art scenes, I guess you could say. Houston is just like, it's so much talent there. Really? Yeah, you can't even imagine. And that just feeds you. That makes you better. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you just want to do something as good as it or better than everybody else. Or mm -hmm. you want to find out how your work is supposed to help people. Or, mm. you know, you try to find your place for your work. Houston was really, like, the place that I uh, really became educated, though, in, like, the public art business and oh, wow. yeah. learn how to look at the city or look at the people and, like, just all kind of cool stuff. One of my favorite projects in Houston was uh, the George Floyd mural we did on the Breakfast Club because wow, it's the Breakfast Club. Like true, was, yeah. I we, remember seeing pictures of that. That's dope. Yeah, man. So, so I, yeah. So how does how does that work? So I think you mentioned it twice. Like you were talking about Shreveport, the Shreveport with love, and then the Juneteenth thing, and then the George Floyd uh, incident, or the drawing y'all did. Um, how do they con contact you for that? Or do you reach out to them? Or, like, how does that work? Yeah, it's either or. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the George Floyd thing, that was a reach out to them. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we did the mural before. Actually, a guy named Reginald Adams, he did the mural. He did a mural on the side of the building before. He had a connection with the owners. Like, hey, you know, we as artists, we need to speak to what's going on. Right. We need yeah. to speak out on this injustice that's just been committed. So that can happen like that, or you can get a grant that comes up uh, from one of these Louisiana organizations that say, hey, we got grant money for arts, oh, wow. and you can apply for that, and if you got a vision, you can edu uh, execute it like that. It's, mm. it's a lot of ways, but uh, my, my career has been a mixture of both, like mm. you either seeing something or God's, God placing it on my heart, like, oh, you need to, you need to be over there doing that with them, so. Yeah. Uh, so that's like, so that's really cool. So it's like a collaboration because have you done a mural just by yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. Well, I just finished the Hilton right right down the street. Wow. And I did that one by myself. And uh, I really don't like working alone, though, man. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like you were talking about that you love doing that or that's how you operate. Uh, it's something about having a community, one. And mm -hmm. just uh, if you can work with the right people, man, in any I feel like in any yeah. job, it could just when you're painting, it's it's such a long time that you're doing the work mm -hmm. that you can either use the time to be like listening to a podcast or right. or like this. Be, one, welcome to the woods. It's just woods. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could you could be doing anything. But when you got somebody to talk to, you know, that's that's connection. And that's, that's different. Real. You know, that's a different way to pass the time. So. All right. Or that. So other than yourself, who's a great mural artist here in Shreveport? Ooh, you got my guy Willie Love. He's been doing things in the city for a long time. But mm -hmm. uh, if I could shout anybody out, well, Ben Moss. Ben Moss, me and Ben get down on a lot of projects. For real? Yeah, my boy. He's he's a boss with the graffiti. You know Ben Moss? Uh, I feel like I heard that name, but I can't put a face to it. Yeah, I man. can't put a face to it right now. He's a man, and I ain't going to say too much about him. I don't want to make it blow his head up. 
Eric Francis, uh, he he he's a beast. Terry and Mays, he's a younger cat. He, everybody needs to be collecting his work. He's a hustler. I love his grind, and he's mm. big on Facebook. So I, I follow him. And a few females like Calandra, uh, Calandra, Jessica, Jessica Johnson. Uh, and they li- all live here in Shreveport? Yeah, Shreveport got some talent. Dang, man. man. Yeah. Y'all, I feel like y'all got like a hit squad right there, boy. I mean, they really should all come together and do something, you know. I be thinking about that. I just ain't got a lot of time. But. You the leader, bro, man. Everybody's counting on you. Wow. I believe. I know you got the talent, man. That's, re- that's mad pressure. cool, man. Did, so Hilton hit you up about that project? Yeah, the Hilton's doing a whole renovation on their rooftop. Like, it's going to be oh, crazy. Rooft- oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, and the pool area, they put a bar up there it's like i'm trying to get past this because i want to be able to go up whenever i want to yeah well but shout out to hilton for uh supporting local art man that's really cool yeah they're good with that marianne okay. thank you yeah i had a. Uh, I i spent some time in new orleans shooting movies and stuff and i it was i didn't really know about this but they have like i mean this is just random but like they had like electrical boxes and stuff there and then they would have like graffiti art around it yeah and i realized it was like a program through the city that they let okay they're like okay this month this artist could paint on the on this box and they'll like cover it and then the, the next month they let another artist do that right. have you heard stuff like that before man take this moment to ask mayor arsenault tom arsenault tom what's up man let's do that in downtown shreveport Come let's on. paint the electric boxes around the city hey, it was be really awesome? cool yeah because it, it, it felt intentional yeah at first i was just like oh that's really neat and they're like oh yeah this is this artist time and then the next artist will be able to do it and i was like dang what a way to showcase your art and some of the smallest electrical box now they had like obviously a side of buildings and stuff down there yeah. but i remember i still i'll never forget that because i was like oh this city is not accidentally the way it is they mm-hmm. plan this stuff out you know what i'm saying they ain't just all just running wild Doing stuff, which they probably are, but they also have a, a junction with the city to do these certain things legally. So it's important that you're calling it out. I think that it just shows that people who aren't artists pay attention to it. Like it's yeah. something that people really appreciate. Yeah, man. And I think one thing was like it wasn't accidental. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, I, you go down there and be like, oh man, but to see that the the uh, the city was behind them really was like put a smile to my face. Like dang, like. They have a, artists have a home in New Orleans. You know what I mean? Like Straight they up. could do their thing, and and uh, the city is behind their back, 100. percent Yeah. So yeah, Mr. Tom, Mayor Tom, let's get, let's get on that. <laughs> for, for the local artists, man, for sure, for yeah, sure, for, for sure. sure. That's dope. That's dope. All right, let me see. Uh, so what do you label yourself in the creative world? A uh, public artist. Public artist. Muralist. Uh, muralist. But I like public artist more because muralist is just painting. Mm. And I, I'm starting to move into some sculpture work. So wow, trying to expand across different mediums, man. Yeah, is that easy for you to expand like that, or is it like going back every time it's to the drawing board? Or? Yeah, it's easy. I just like challenges, right, and I sure. like to keep it fresh. So, yeah. and yeah, I'm just trying to stay stay at the top of the game and st- yeah, stay you know. hungry. Yeah, I like for that. sure, for sure. So, are you a full time artist? Yeah, right on. Man. But I do other things like of course. Most my main focus and passion and where I devote most it's of my time. thoughts and, <laughs> and energy is art. So what is uh, some advice for young artists who want to who want to fill your shoes one day? Uh, to tackle these murals and stuff. Like, what is your advice for them? Yeah, I never heard it like that. Like, fill my shoes. Yeah. Because when I think of that, I think of like, I don't really want nobody to look up to me, you know. Mm. I want them to be the best version of themselves. Right. So that's the kind of... St- that's the kind of thing I would tell them or anybody. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, pay attention to and follow your interest. I heard Jeff Kuhn say that. He's a f- famous artist. And ever since he said that, it never left my mind because it can apply to anyone. Like, follow your interests. Mm-hmm. And then ask yourself, why are you interested in that? You know, dive deep into it. Even you could take that advice. So that's my advice to young artists. I got you. I got you. Sweet, yeah. Well, that that tackles two questions about like <laughs> where you get your advice from and uh, your advice for young artists. I know I saw you last week at a showcase. Um, yeah. Have you done one for yourself yet, or uh, how does that look? I haven't done a show, but I'm definitely thinking about it. I would love to like interact with the community in that way. Mm-hmm. I just have so many visions about what a street yeah. for a show would look like. Yeah, and. But I'm still working on how to communicate to everyone. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to just be a, 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 a African American art show. Mm-hmm. I wanted to bring people from all parts of the city together. I got so you. So that's what I'm focused on. All right, man, we behind you, brother. It sounds good, man. Like seriously, one hundred. 
Yeah, and then yeah, hey, man. we could bring some musical artists with it too. We could be a big old collaboration, man. No doubt. For sure, for sure. We got a strong team for sure on our end. Um, all right, let me see what we got here. So. So yeah, we were talking about graffiti art. Are you a fan of graffiti art? Yeah, it's cool. Like what? Like what? Technically, is graffiti art? I mean, I know it's like is it is graffiti what we started spray? in New York. It was like uh, I can't even think of the specific year. I want to say around the same time that hip hop was starting, like what around the seventies or something. It was a way for uh, young teenagers to like just be cool and write their name around the city, and they would call it a tag. And that oh, okay. became a thing. People start getting more creative with it. Wow. And then people everywhere start doing it. So now a lot of, uh, there's a certain group of people that, that, uh, tag, that tag graffiti or use the term in a, a derogatory manner. Like they try to make it seem like a bad thing. Yeah. And in some places it is like, if you spray paint and like, I don't really get down with that. Don't come spray paint on my shit. Like, <laughs> if I didn't give you the permission. Yeah, to do of course. It, like, of course. But if it's like a designated place for you to come exercise, get your get your spray paint off, and you know, be creative, have fun, yeah. it's just, it's no different than any other community that comes together to do whatever they do. That's real. That's real. That's real. What you think about it? I like you said. I like what you were just saying. Like the respect of it. I like the expression of it, and uh, I really don't know. I just I feel like it's a part of art, but I feel like the way we like the reputation of it is almost like it's a lower form of art. I mm-hmm. guess it kind of seems like a like a street thing to do and not necessarily like a professional part of art. Yeah. But from what you talk about, it, it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, anything could be like what the community feels like. Mm-hmm. So I was really trying to get like the real definition of a graffiti because it might not be what I think it is, what the TV says it is or what the newscasts say it is or whatever, you know, so. Well, let me let me ask you this. When you had a, a train and you're mm-hmm. stopped at a train and you see the graffiti on the side of the train, isn't that mm-hmm. interesting to look at? Yeah, it is. I was like, see, <laughs> it's where your it's own from. like yeah. art show, right? In yeah, front of you. straight up. I never thought about it having yeah. to be an art show, but yeah, that's <laughs> straight up. That's how sure. I want people to look at it. Yeah, man, art is art is amazing, man. There's so many different like versions of it and capsules of it, man, and that's really cool. So, um, so an artist career. What do you what do you see your artist career in ten years? Dude, ten years. Ten I years, don't know bro. where it's gonna be in two. <laughs> like, dang, that's hard. I would just say, like, I hope it's a place for it. Like, um, dang, man, it's hard to put concrete yeah. ideas to it. I can speak abstractly about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's helping people and helping me, you know? Right. So, I, I can't, making a lot of money, let's say that. <laughs> I like that. I think we all would like that. <laughs> I think we all would like that, man. Um, but yeah, so that's really cool. So you're doing it full time now. You, I mean, that's really cool. How long are you gonna be at the Hilton? I'm done at the Hilton. You done at it? Yeah, it's not revealed to the public till like May fifth or oh, something wow. like that. Though it's a, it's it's a minute before they'll be done with uh, renovations. All right. All right. So what? Um, if you could give Shreveport a grade, like A through F, where do you put their art scene at right now, in your opinion? Mm. This is coming from a professional, so it's not some, nothing to dig on the city that we live in, but more of like a motivation and inspiration. That's exactly what it is, motivation and inspiration. Like, if there weren't any problems, then we wouldn't have nothing to exactly, do. Exactly, exactly. So I would say it's about a D. D? Yeah. A lot of room for improvement, a lot of room for improvement. It's about a D. I'm, and I'm just saying that because uh, I, I I wanted to say C, but I just can't give it C until I see, like, there are some things, like, it's a lot of people in Shreveport, man. Mm-hmm. And there are so many uh, teens, and there are so many artists in the city just in general. Mm-hmm. I just see there's so much room for improvement on how they could be working together. Right. Like, imagine all the artists was – doing the same type of work, like, yeah. to communicate messages to, to the city. Like, they really, like, imagine all this, all the musicians in the city, right, uh-huh. come together and they sing a song. Like, they all know ten people. And they sing this song at the same time on, mm. on youth Facebook Live or some shit. Right. Dude, imagine the impact that would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of stuff. That's, that's why I give it a D. Okay. 
Yeah, I've done a lot of work with the Shreveport Arts Council, Regional Arts Council. I think it's Serac over there, Serac, how they explain it. But they're dope. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're they're kind of with that too, trying to bring the connectivity back. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, we could just yeah. I, I think that's what the uh, the theme of this this podcast of today is just like connectivity and and bringing y'all together. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, awesome. you said a lot of names I didn't know, but I bet like they they had hands in those a lot of these murals and stuff that we see every time. Yeah, yeah. and that stuff like brings like joy because like i used to drive like you know just driving to texas here like how they do the highways and stuff like that you're like man they really they really appreciate where they live and i feel like that's what visual art does on like murals and stuff like that it's like man we actually like where we live you know and we want to make it look better and really cool stuff like that yeah it's an investment right yeah makes you feel good and something about just seeing like the human element like doing what is meant to do like something about that is like magical yeah and i also i thought about this before i want to talk about you did the uh, the rainbow colors on the the pillars huh? yeah. on the interstate. <laughs> how, how did, was that just you or how did that? No, it was that? me and three other artists. Three other artists. Uh huh. How many pillars did y'all paint? Man, it was fourteen thousand <laughs> seven hundred square feet of paint. Uh, we painted twenty six columns, thirteen on each side of the road. Good night, nice, sorry. Forty to fifty feet. High. How long did that take? Yeah, like two months. Oh, so two months. Two months. Yeah. You and three people, three other people. Yeah, Ben Moss, uh, Willie Love, Eric Francis. We we like got down on that project, man. It was a it was a project generated from the uh, Greater Shreveport Chamber of Commerce Leadership Class. Everybody needs to look into that class because it's mm-hmm. like a you get linked up with incredible people that have like promising futures in the city, mm-hmm. and uh, y'all y'all have this connection that goes on after the class. But every class does a project. And I was in the class, and uh, wow. man, I was just like, hey, let's do a public art project that communicates transformation and growth in the city, and God did the rest. Yeah, man. Every time I drive around, I'm like, man. And then I know you did it, so I was like, man, KD did that. That's pretty <laughs> dope. I know the artist behind that. And uh, that's really cool because, I mean, around the area, it just it just shows, like you said, it show, to me it shows unity. You know what I mean? So. That's really cool that you did that, man. And it's, shout out to you said uh, Greater Shreveport Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, the okay. Shreveport Chamber of Commerce. Uh, are you still with them? It's a leadership class, so it's like uh, uh, a few months of leadership classes that you go through. You get to explore different entities in the city wow. and learn more about the underworkings of the uh, companies and businesses that make the city do what it does. Okay, and that was just your project. Yep. That was really cool, man. That's something that's forty fourth class. Yeah, so everybody, uh, you said one hundred forty four. No, this was the forty fourth class, and class. they just had the forty fifth. You should check it out for this year. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that for sure, for sure. Yeah. Everybody who passed those pillars downtown, uh, your boy right here, and three other people, as he said, made that. So that's really cool. They cool to put a face with the visual art, you know. Yeah. Did you tag it? No. Nah. Your names on it or somewhere. Yeah, we got everybody got their names on it somewhere. Uh, but the name of the project is Ascension Underpass. And Ascension, mm. you know, like when you refer to Jesus or anything that's like uh, going higher, mm. that's pretty much what what we got Ascension from. And a few other things like, man, the projects get crazy, bro. So many things happen that are just like universally aligned that make it like, oh, it, it got to be this. And Ascension was the name of the project. So wow. that was one of the things. Dang, man. Yeah, thank you for shouting that out. Man, look, bro. Like, my family is <laughs> behind you, too. I remember because you did the Galilee <laughs> mural, and that's yeah. the church that I grew up with. Yeah. So my mom was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I went to college with him. So, like, we all, it's it's almost like, it's almost like watching a movie, get to see, like, the beautiful stuff that y'all are a part of because wow. it's visual. You know what I mean? It's like you listen, you listen to a song, and it's only there for that song, but you you might pass a place downtown or somewhere, and it always, like, it does something to you. Like I said, I grew up in that church, so seeing something like that, a part of the backside of that building where y'all, the stadium where y'all did, you know, we passed by that so many times, but yeah. now with something really cool and beautiful there that people could take and take a picture of and, like, be a part of. So I commend you for that, man. Like, Appreciate keep on, it. man. You got a fan here. I know you got <laughs> some fans watching, so uh, keep on, man. That's what, that's what this city needs. This city needs hope, and I feel like visual art, art brings hope, but I know visual art definitely brings hope. Why it's a representation you think the city of hope. needs hope? It's just a lot of young crime, and I feel like a lot of the young crimes because lack of hope and loss of hope and loss of identity, and I feel like um, hope 
kind of fills that void and like makes you want to look forward to the future. You know what I'm saying? You could do a lot of bad things because you don't you don't really care about where you are tomorrow or you don't have anything to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So all your all your problems and everything you deal with is about today, today, today. But seeing those beautiful murals and paintings are like it's like, man, like we can really do something like this. Or we're we're a part of history or like even when you do paintings of history, you get to see visually what that was. You know, we can't touch it, but we could touch your art. You know what I mean? Like you kind of put it in a tangible way, you know? And I feel like art is hope. Uh, that's why I love it. That's why I love being a part of it because it makes life uh, more enjoyable and more livable, yeah. in my opinion, at least. That's dope. Yeah, man. So if you need some kind of, like, encouragement while you're up there, trust me. Like, I know I'm not the only one who thinks that, but for sure, man, it's like you're just painting hope for me, at least. Like, yeah, we could turn the city around or – not saying it's in a downward spiral, but it's just a lot of young kids doing a lot of things that I feel like they're not looking and they're thinking about their future as they make it. Or if they are thinking about the future, it's not like their future is not very bright as far as like by decision that they're making, you know? I can sometimes I uh, uh, get caught up in thinking about is it is it just the fact that we know, like, have you ever lived outside of Shreveport? Yeah, so I'm a military kid, so i uh, Georgia and I was born in Germany, so I've been outside. But the later end of your life has been in Shreveport. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So it, it's hard for me because I, I sit up and I think, like, is it just, like, my thinking about the city that makes me feel like it needs something or does the city really need any? Like, I, I get caught up in that because, you know, there are a lot of elements that are good about Shreveport and it, there are a lot of st strong, like, uh, movements happening and it, there there are parts of the city with a good – bag i want to say like a nice economy working mm -hmm. so it's like why do why is the first thing that we say is that dang the city needs hope and it's like because i if i can get to the meat of that i can really like aim my practice at it mm. you know what i'm saying i could right. really target like dang okay i can i can shrink in and attack the spaces that need to be attacked so i'll be thinking about that yeah man it's just, it's just uh, i guess it's just your perspective on how you look at it but that's just how I see it. You know, just the, the connection between youth and adulthood is for, I feel like, man, we probably need some reinforcements. But then again, that's probably everywhere. You know, I think uh, yeah. even when we were kids, you know, we we think we kind of feel like we're invincible. You know, we kind of make decisions that uh, are probably a tough decision that we probably don't even know. Like, think about the repercussions mm -hmm. too far in advance. But um, there might be a lot of places that have to deal with that. But I feel like. We should be not focused on hope, but I was like, man, we need some more hope here because yeah. I feel like that would change a lot of decisions. Can't give it, can't get enough of that. Real talk. But so, there are things that show us, you know, at least where to start. Oh, a hundred percent, man, and that's what this podcast is for—just showing that there <laughs> are people doing great things no and showcasing the greatness that the city has to offer. So this is a part of my podcast. I, ju I just this is only a second episode, so the first person was a part of it, got to be a part of it. They didn't get to read it, so. I have these cards here, and uh, it's just uh, advice. We were talking about advice before. Oh, so the cool. last person here, Shana D, music, shout out to her. She wrote some advice for you. Didn't even know it was going to be you. <laughs> I haven't even read it. And uh, yeah. when we get down here, I want you to uh, write advice to somebody. You don't even know who it's going to be. I don't know who it's going to be. Sure. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to let them read it uh, just like I'm going to let you read it. So here's your advice from Shana D. So if you don't take your time, if you take your time to read it, that'd Am be Am I supposed cool. to read it aloud? Yeah, please, yeah. Shana D, shout out to you. It says, Hello. I just want to tell you that I'm proud of you for living your dreams. Mm. Don't get discouraged. Keep going no matter what. Wow. Wow. Am I going to get to keep this? Yes, please. I keep, yeah. I keep notes like this please when people do. tell me that. Thanks, Shana D. Yeah. And I'm going to reach out to you and personally. Right on, man. Right on, man. So uh, awesome. what are you working on in the future? You got anything in the future going on? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. Some stuff I don't speak about because... I'm kind of, what do you call it, superstitious. Superstitious, yeah. Yeah, so, but things I can speak about, like, I probably got something coming up in April in Philadelphia, part of this really dope uh, mural campaign called uh -huh. Absolute Equality, kind of like the one I did here, but we're going to go do one in Philly, so that's going to be dope. Wow. Uh, I got some schools that I'm about to start working with, Turner Middle Elementary School, wow. about to do some stuff out there. I need to hit up Dr. Webb and uh, Herndon. Y'all, you know where Herndon is? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, not there. Herndon. Damn, Warner Park. I'm getting schools mixed up. <laughs> I have heard of Warner Park, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm really thinking about what I can do up there. I really want to work with the kids up there. So that's pretty, that's my immediate focus. Right on. Yeah. All right, so what's a good way to uh, 
people to follow you on your uh, socials and stuff? What's your handles? And yeah, my IG is Kadavian, K-A-D-A-V-I-E-N. And uh, that's pretty much where you can find me, Facebook. I got a nice Facebook family, so either yeah, one. It's cool. And my website is www.kadavian.com. Sweet, yeah. You heard the man. Go check all it out. Give him a follow. Look at what he's up to. And uh, hopefully have him again on here one day. Uh, thanks for another episode in the woods with your boy the wolf and my boy KD. Do the howl, bro. Oh, you want to hear the howl? You want to hear me howl? <laughs> 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 I love it. Right on, baby. <laughs>